Hi, I'm Yara Shahidi, and I'm here today with Harper's Bazaar UK to share a little bit about what you don't know about me. Oh, my friends would describe me with the words niche, musical, because I always am playing music, and quirky? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> If I wasn't an actor, I would easily be a history professor. And that's still not off the table for me. I've always wanted to be a historian since I was young. For my 10th birthday, I did one of those like, dress up is what you want to be when you're older. And I was in a seersucker suit with a pocket watch, because that's what I assumed historians dress like. But I've just always loved history. And I think even just graduating from college, I have such a deep love of the classroom and teachers and my educators have been so foundational in my life that I couldn't think of a better job. I also come from a family of educators, from elementary school to professors. A career moment that's changed my life really starts with when I was seven, I did my first movie, Imagine That, opposite Eddie Murphy. It changed my life because it made me realize that this is what I wanted to do. I had so much fun on set. I learned how to ice skate. It was truly about a young girl living in an imaginary world. And I think that definitely changed the trajectory of my life because prior to that, I was doing commercials and print work and was so happy doing commercials and print work that I had no desire to step into TV and movies. <laughs> Maybe growing up is okay, is how I would describe Peter Pan and Wendy in one sentence. I play Tinkerbell, and not only is she the Tinkerbell that has the fierceness and feistiness that we know and love, but she has a lot to say. People just can't understand her. <laughs> Best piece of career advice? would have to be for my parents. I think one thing they've always reminded me is that Hollywood isn't going anywhere. I think especially as a young person, sometimes there's this anxiety about the phrase striking when the iron's hot and thinking like, now is your moment and you have to capitalize on it. It'll never come back again. But I think being grounded in that advice has meant that we've been given the space to go explore our other interests, knowing that we can still live very full lives and come back to this when we want to. I get angry when this is specific, when I have to sit in booths, I do not like restaurant booths. I feel like I'm sitting in the past lives of whoever sat there before. There's something about sink, yeah. I'm not necessarily angry as much as I'm just <laughs> grossed out. Ooh, I will pull up a chair. I, it does not matter the setup, I am a chair girl. I'm starting to get better. I'll, I'll bring a very large coat and sit on that. I just don't know what it is, but yeah. I love a firm chair. I'm happiest when I'm listening to the song I really want to listen to. Like I can always tell when I'm about to go through a funk when I wake up and don't know immediately the song I want to listen to because music drives so much of my life. I just saw Frank Ocean at Coachella some days ago and so that reignited my love for At Your Best, his cover of the Aaliyah song on his Endless album. Just so moving. Daniel Caesar's song with Omar Apollo, I think it's called Buyer's Remorse, I'm really liking right now. Weston Estate. Boy Band has a really cool song, Pairs. It's been out for a while, but I like all their music. The closest I can get is that I sound kind of hollow right here. It's not necessarily a party trick, but like... But I don't know, like, what do you do with that at a party? I've tried, I've tried to bring that to a party. Not much conversation happens once you're like, guys, check this out. People are just concerned after that. Uh, dandruff picking videos. <laughs> That is not one I share often. <laughs> Going back to the career question, I'd be a dermatologist just for dandruff and psoriasis. <laughs> there are two things that come to mind. I love certain authors, and so I'll get like either first or early editions of books. And so I have quite a cool book collection in my room. And then a birthday trip. Me and my friends went on a birthday trip, which was quite fun, which I, I usually am working around my birthday, so I don't often travel. Best beauty tip comes from my Nana, my grandmother, and it's don't touch your face. And it's the one I struggle with the most because uh, you forget how much bacteria and stuff just lives on your hands if you're not constantly washing your hands. And for a long time, I was a skin picker, um, which would always make things worse. That has been the lesson of a lifetime. Just don't touch your face. I think is inside out. Like when I was younger, I think self-care was definitely like throw a face mask on, binge a show, which still counts. But now mine is a lot more boring. Like take your supplements. Did you remember your iron today, Yara? 
I think it's been prioritizing taking care of myself. I think there are a lot of times I really enjoy the work that I do, and I think sometimes it's easy to let doctor's appointments go by, to let those moments of just basic maintenance kind of zoom right past you. So I've been trying to be a lot more intentional about making sure that my body is at its best. <laughs> when I have a tan, I love being brown, and sometimes I feel like Casper the friendly ghost when I'm in a studio all day. But honestly, I think for me, I used to have such a weird relationship with makeup that now I love when I'm makeup free and my skin is clear because it means that I get to approach makeup and beauty from a space of agency and not feeling like I'm covering up, but feeling like, oh, I get to be creative. I get to think about the fun eyeliner I get to wear today or the fun lip. And so, yeah, I think I feel most beautiful when I'm really comfortable with how my skin looks, which I'm still getting there. I'm still, I think there's still plenty of shallow things that I care about and I'll freak out about an eczema flare up or something now and then. But yeah, that changes my perspective on makeup and all sorts of other things. It's a good baseline for me. Superpower, power of persuasion because I'd persuade all other superheroes to use their powers in my favor. It's kind of a ripoff. It's like the knockoff version of Rogue from the X-Men who just takes people's powers temporarily, but she accidentally kills people in the comic books and I didn't want that. So, I mean, what's better than one power? Persuading a gaggle of superheroes to do your bidding. That sounds more like a supervillain power the more I'm talking it out. Advice I'd give my younger self would probably be, not everything's nearly as important as you think it is and prioritize. I think at times my fatal flaw is it doesn't matter what the task at hand is, I think everything is of equal importance. I also felt like everything had equal impact on my future. An assignment I didn't do really well on would freak me out as much as a job or opportunity. And so I think I dealt with a lot of unnecessary anxieties because I didn't just naturally prioritize and say, well, you live a very full life, so just figure out what matters to you at this moment and go from there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned a little bit more about me.